Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about the use of theory and quantitative research and how and where to write up your theory when you are writing your proposal or your manuscript. Um, so quantitative research tests hypotheses from theory. Uh, so theory is sort of the foundation in quantitative research because you work with theory um, to write your hypotheses and determine what you think the relationships are going to be among variables um, that you are testing in your research. So you test causal claims in quantitative research. Uh, so causality means that we expect one variable to cause a change in another variable, uh, which is different from an association or correlation where we're just talking about one variable having a relationship with another variable where we can't necessarily demonstrate causality. Um, so a confounding variable would be a variable that may actually be the cause. Okay, so if we're expecting one variable to cause another, a confounding variable would be a different separate variable that might actually be what is causing the change in the dependent variables. Um, so true experiments test causal claims and correlation analysis and surveys can test associations. So they can test for relationships, but not necessarily um, detect causality. Um, so a variable is a characteristic of an individual or group that can be measured or observed. Um, so many, many, many things can be variables. It depends on what you are studying and who you're studying. Um, but demographic factors are variables. So like age, gender, socioeconomic status, and so on. Um, and then other variables could be like attitudes or health outcomes or all sorts of different things. Um, so variables can have a temporal order, so they can be ordered in a time frame, um, and they can be measurable or observable. So in quantitative research, we have lots of different types of variables. So the independent variable is the variable that is probably causing the outcomes, or at least we're hypothesizing that it will cause the outcomes. A dependent variable, those are the outcomes that are caused or changed by the independent variables. A predictor is used to predict an outcome of interest like in survey method studies. So there might be some aspect, some quality that we can say is a predictor of this outcome. So an outcome is a result or outcome of interest in survey method studies uh, similar to dependent variables. Uh, intervening or mediating variables are variables that stand between the independent and dependent variables. So like if we see that an independent variable does have an effect on a dependent variable, but only when this other variable is all, also present, um, then that would be a mediating variable. So the independent variable affects the mediating variable, which affects the dependent variable. But if we remove that mediating variable, then the independent variable does not directly affect the dependent variable. A moderating variable is a predictor variable that affects the relationship between the independent and other predictor variables. So moderating means it is moderating the relationship between the independent variable and any other predictor variables. And then control refers to variables that are measured and statistically controlled. Um, so if there are variables that we think might affect the dependent variable, if we measure it sufficiently, we can statistically control for those effects of that um, variable, and we can control for it to statistically see what is the true effect of the independent variable on the dependent variable when we remove the effects of that controlled variable. Okay, so what is theory in quantitative research? Um, so theory is a scientific prediction or explanation of what the researcher expects to find. Um, so theories are developed all sorts of different ways. Um, so it could be developed through qualitative research, which is more exploratory. Um, so in qualitative research, you explore the topic, 
Um, and depending on what's found, you might develop a theory and then test hypotheses based on that theory uh, quantitatively. Um, or theory can emerge um, from quantitative research. So similar types of quantitative research done over time that where certain relationships emerge and that could uh, develop into a theory. Um, so there's different ways where theories are developed, but then when there is a theory, then that can be used as the foundation of further research because now there's an expected relationship between variables. Um, so a theory involves different constructs or variables and there's a stated relationship um, of what is expected to happen with the interaction between those constructs or variables. Um, so micro level theories are theories that only really apply to a very specific place or small group of people or maybe only during a certain segment of time. Uh, macro level theories are broader in scale, they apply to a larger population. Um, and then a meso level theory would be a theory that is linking and forming a bridge between the micro and macro level theories. So it's offering some kind of connection or explanation for, um, you know, based on this macro level theory, here's why, or here's how this micro level theory fits in, or here's why we have this theory based on, you know, so it's, it's just a way to connect micro and macro level theories in a logical way that makes sense. Um, so ways that we express the use of theory in quantitative research is they will be expressed clearly in the hypotheses and the research questions, depending on which you use or both. Um, but the hypotheses should clearly demonstrate the theory that is being applied um, because the hypotheses should be based on that theory and the relationships that are expected based on the theory. Um, there also could be a series of if-then statements, so those would explain why uh, you would expect an independent variable to influence the dependent variable, and the reason you expect that is based on the theory that you are building your research study around. Um, and then my favorite way for expressing a theory or for reading papers where they're expressing theory is visually. Um, so you can give a visual model um, that really helps uh, make the sometimes complicated interactions among variables more visually um, appealing and easier to interpret, easier to understand than sometimes it can be just in a written form. Um, so creating some kind of um, flow chart or graphic, some kind of visual model to demonstrate uh, the theory and the, the connections between the different variables is really helpful. Um, so where in your proposal or your manuscript should this be? Um, you'd put it toward the beginning of the study or toward the beginning of your paper, like in the introduction. Um, so you should be discussing literature and in your discussion of literature, you can be drawing in the different theories that could apply in the area that you're studying. And then you would land on the theory that you want to pursue the, and, and support that with evidence from the literature about why do you think that theory is the most relevant for your study. Um, so you'd put it towards the beginning and discuss it uh, in, mixed in kind of with your literature review. Um, and you would use the theory deductively, meaning that the theory would be broader in scope than your study. And then you would kind of boil that theory down to fit your study so that your study would be providing evidence in support of the validity of that theory. Um, the theory should provide the framework for your study and will help you write your research questions and hypotheses and design your data collection procedures. Um, so it should be clearly stated what the theory is, why you chose that theory and how it's relevant in your study and how that is guiding your research questions or hypotheses and your data collection. Um, so when you are writing, um, when you're writing your manuscript or your proposal, you want to look to the literature. Of course, it's where we always start. So you're going to do a literature review and examine 
um, the literature in the specific discipline and find whatever relevant papers there are, other studies and, and things um, that are related to your topic and to other kind of neighboring topics. Um, so it's possible that that theory hasn't been applied before to your specific topic, which means that's a great place, that's a great study for you to be conducting because it hasn't been done yet. Um, so you might find um, application of the theory in your specific area, or you might not, and you want to also branch out to kind of neighboring areas, as long as those studies are able to help you support the use of that theory for your study. Um, then you'll ask a question that bridges the independent and dependent variables based on that theory. Um, and then when you're ready to write, you're going to name the theory. You're going to give credit to where that theory originated. So whoever is the author who first talked about that theory, um, make sure you give credit where credit is due. You will identify different topics where it's been applied in previous research. Um, so in other disciplines or within your discipline, but in different topics, um, identify propositions or hypotheses based on that uh, theory, uh, state the variables, so the independent and dependent variables based on that theory, and give a rationale for why that theory is the best one, that's the best choice for you to base your study on, and why uh, you agree with that study, or um, you might... Um, refer to the literature and discuss why uh, it has or hasn't worked before in different disciplines and why you think it's the most appropriate in this particular study. All right, that's all I have for you in this video. Thanks so much for watching.